In the city, you are called upon to make a greater variety of decisions and to make them more frequently than anywhere else. For some drivers, too many things happen too quickly and they make the wrong decisions. Other drivers, and there are millions of them, blend into city traffic for years without scratching a fender. They do it and you can do it by one, observing all traffic controls. Two, never assuming that other people will do the expected. Three, being willing to yield the right of way to anyone who needs it. And four, constantly analyzing the situation ahead. Let's take a closer look into some of the important things that city drivers have to know about and think about. Beginning with speed controls. Most states have an urban speed limit, such as 25 miles per hour, which applies to all thoroughfares where speed limit signs are not used. Every driver is expected to know this unposted local limit, whatever it may be, and adjust to conditions as necessary. Speeds above the standard limit may be posted for other thoroughfares. And on some, the limits will be lower. and cautious speeds are always required in school zones. Watching for zone speed limit signs and observing them is one of the things that marks a good driver. When you see a speed limit sign, make it automatic to glance at your speedometer. An important thing to realize about all speed limits is that they are only permissive. Motorists do not have a right to do 45 in this zone if adverse weather or traffic conditions make 45 unsafe. It's up to you to adjust your speed to the road conditions and the traffic, even though it may be far below the legal limit. Traffic authorities are just as anxious to have traffic move quickly as the drivers themselves. The limits posted for each area are based on accident experience and are as fast as safety will allow. Now let's talk about lanes and passing. Main thoroughfares in cities are divided into lanes to guide the movement of traffic. On multiple lane streets, the flow of traffic in the two directions is often divided by a double line. Some people have trouble driving between the lines and have a tendency to ride on or even over the line on the left. Why do they do this? Because they are looking too low with their eyes. By looking high so that you look well ahead down the center of your lane, you will drive in the center. Then there are drivers who act like the lines just aren't there. They straddle a line or drift from one lane to another. Entirely aside from the matter of legality, this is thoughtless and dangerous. Because there are so many careless drivers and because anything can happen in traffic, Keep a constant watch in all four directions. Also, when possible, look through the windshield of the car ahead. Normally, we pass other vehicles on the left. On busy thoroughfares and boulevards, it is sometimes permissible to pass on the right. Also, 
On one-way streets, cars may be passed on either side. At some intersections, the lanes may be marked for left, through, and right. You must travel in the direction indicated for your lane. So plan ahead to be in the lane you want. Passing always involves a certain amount of risk. You can reduce this risk to a minimum by waiting for a safe, stable opening ahead, checking carefully to the rear and to both sides, as well as forward. You also have a blind spot. A car may be in this blind spot. You should not move into the left lane without making sure that no car is there overtaking you. You can check your blind spot by using your side mirror. Plus, turning your head for a quick glance. Having made certain that your way is clear to pass, signal your intention to change lanes. Because other drivers do not always follow these sensible rules, the car you intend to pass could suddenly attempt to change lanes without signaling. He may not realize you are there. Glance at his left front wheel. This will give you the earliest warning of his intentions. If he begins to drift to the left, use your horn. All right now, go on through. Now let's look into some questions concerning right of way. The expression right of way is used to designate who has preference in the use of the road. Signal lights and stop signs at intersections help to do this. The same rules apply to turn signs. There are, however, a few exceptions. A police officer directing traffic at an intersection can overrule all lights and signs. demand the right of way. Right of way means little to violators who ignore signs and make illegal turns. Because anything can happen, it pays to check all intersections even when the light is green. The green light isn't a command to move automatically ahead. It simply gives permission to go if the way is clear. Yield right of way signs are a compromise between stop signs and no signs at all. If there is no nearby oncoming traffic, you can roll through without stopping. Otherwise, you wait until it's safe. Cars leaving secondary streets, alleys, or driveways always yield the right of way to through traffic. If a car has already entered an intersection, a vehicle approaching yields the right of way. When two cars reach an uncontrolled intersection at the same time, the driver on the left is supposed to yield to the one on the right, but don't take it for granted. During non-rush hours, you can move along at a steady pace. It's a good habit to observe the light cycles so you can be sure of getting through an intersection before the light changes. And here, as elsewhere, it pays to maintain a safe space cushion between your car and other vehicles. In a rush hour situation like this, the cars on the busy through street do not have the right to block intersections. Here, they are doing the right thing. 
The good driver always yields the right of way to pedestrians crossing at intersections or on marked crosswalks. You appreciate this consideration when you are a pedestrian. When you are driving, you have the comfort and security of your car. It will help you to be more patient and more considerate by realizing that some pedestrians are very old and some are very young. That many of them know nothing about driving problems. So, how about giving pedestrians a break? Drivers with the best safety records are the ones who have yield right of way signs built into their heads. They are less concerned with their technical rights than they are with courtesy and good common sense. In rush hour traffic, the driver on the through street has the right of way. When it is safe, he courteously stops and lets the other fellow get out of his driveway. How much time did the courteous driver lose? Our next subject has to do with turns. Turning a corner is just as easy as it looks once you know how. What you need is a good approach and good control. A good approach consists of getting into the proper turning lane well ahead of your arrival at the intersection. You check to the rear, signal your intention to turn, and slow down so that you can stop if necessary. Now, as you reach the intersection, moving slowly, you check the automobile traffic and carefully observe the position and movements of pedestrians. You are free to go ahead, but must stop for people who are in the crosswalk. Then you complete your turn. This is where a good approach pays off. You are well to the right, as you should be. This, plus continued control of your car, enables you to enter the street entirely within the proper lane. In making a left turn on a two-way street, you begin by approaching the intersection in the lane nearest the center of the street and signaling your intention to turn. A left turn requires you to go across traffic from two directions and join traffic from still another direction. Look in all directions. When all parts of your left turn path are clear, complete your turn. However, with a right turn, you blend with existing automobile traffic. Now let's turn our attention to parking. A good thing to remember is this. All parking maneuvers are done more easily and with less chance of damage to other cars when they are done in slow motion. When you must get out of the car on the street side, take a careful look to the rear before opening the door. One of the problems in parking is the pedestrian who walks between cars without looking. Amazingly enough, many of these careless pedestrians are people who should know better. Your best defense against a parking accident is a swivel neck. As you turn your front wheels to back into a parallel parking place, your front end may be in the way of traffic. 
it is important for you to know that they see you and will yield the right of way. The same need for caution applies, of course, as you pull away from the curve. Traffic on the street always has the right of way, and this includes bicycles and motor scooters. You also need a swivel neck when backing out of a diagonal stall to protect pedestrians and also to avoid interfering with traffic or getting involved in a collision. Rear seat passengers should move over to give the driver maximum visibility. But elbows should stay inside the car. Parking lots are alive with hazards. A good precaution is to approach your car from the rear to be sure that you do not back into an accident. And now for a ride on one of our modern expressways. Quite a few cities now have crosstown expressways or suburban bypasses with multiple lanes and limited access. You enter the expressway by means of a cloverleaf or ramp, usually with one-way traffic. This leads to a blending lane, which normally makes it possible to go from the ramp onto the expressway at cruising speed. Unless signs or traffic indicate otherwise, you do not stop or slow down as you move onto the expressway. Let's enter the ramp again and see what this maneuver involves. First, after entering the ramp, you adjust your speed to establish a good space cushion between yourself and the car ahead. Second, at the earliest moment, when you can see the traffic on the expressway, pick the spot you intend to occupy after you merge with traffic. From this point on, it's a matter of timing to fit into the spot you have selected. And of course, your ability to do this depends on having a clear lane ahead. Once you have joined the mainstream, you keep pace with the other cars. In fact, your road may have a minimum as well as a maximum speed. This is fast travel and safe travel, as long as everyone does his part. You want to maintain a good space cushion to the front and rear of your car. Change lanes only when necessary. And always signal well in advance of your maneuver. Remain in your lane until you have checked traffic all around. Then change lanes. This kind of driving calls for a high degree of attention so that you can plan to meet each developing situation. And that's why you must never stare at anything. An expressway allows no time for sightseeing. When driving on the expressway, you can give a break to people who are trying to enter or leave if you avoid driving in the lane nearest exits and entrances. It's a matter of convenience, as well as safety, to be on the alert for signs that announce exits ahead. If you allow yourself to come upon your own exit suddenly, you might be tempted to make a sudden and dangerous move. Most expressways not only have signs to announce exits well in advance, they also advise you when to start seeking the proper turnoff lane. Using the proper signals and proper caution, 
work your way toward the appropriate lane. Then, arrange to have a good space cushion between yourself and any traffic ahead. Signal your intention to leave the expressway and blend into the exit lane at cruising speed. Then, slow down to the indicated speed limit for the ramp. Driving in the city places you in a special environment where you are called upon to make a greater variety of decisions and make them more frequently than anywhere else. The principles of good driving, however, are always the same at any time, in any place, and under any conditions. You can drive in the city with safety and confidence by observing all traffic controls, never assuming that other people will do the expected, being willing to yield the right of way to anyone who needs it, constantly observing the traffic situation around you to plan your actions ahead. 